Grade 5, Module 6, Lesson 12, Homework. Number 1. Write a rule for the line that contains the point 0, 1 fourth, and 2 and a half, 2 and 3 fourths. Identify two or more points on this line. Draw the line on the grid below. So let's start with the rule between 0 and 1 fourth, and 2 and a half, and 2 and 3 fourths. So finding the difference between those, let's see, 2 and 1 half is the same as 2 and 2 fourths. So we can see that the difference between each one is just 1 fourth. So I'll say the rule is x plus 1 fourth equals y. You could say add 1 fourth to x to get y. Identify two more points on this line. Draw the line on the grid below. So we have 0, 1 fourth. I'll go ahead and plot those. 0, 1 fourth. And then we have two and a half, two and three fourths. So there's two and a half right there. Two and three fourths is right there. So let's just find where they would meet up. It's right at that point. So two more points on the line would be, let's do one, and then if we add a fourth, we would have one and one fourth. Let's plot that one. One and one fourth is right here. And let's do a bigger one, like four. So then plus a fourth would be four and one fourth. So there's four. And then four and one fourth. And let's draw the line. There's my line for B. Write a rule for a line that is parallel to BC. So let's see, this was B and this was point C that goes through point one, two, and one fourth. So here's one, two, and one fourth. So let's find a rule for one two and one fourth, or we could even plot some that we know would be parallel. So it's one, two, three, four units away. So let's, let's do one, two, three, four units. So it would be right there. That point is two and a half, three and three fourths. And then we have one, two and one fourth. So it looks like each time we're adding one and one fourth. So the rule could be x plus one and one fourth equals y. Number two, give the rule for the line that contains the point one, two and a half, and two, two, two and a half, two and a half. So what I see here is that both y values are two and a half. Um, the x values change, but the y values stay the same. So I would say the rule would be y is always equal to 2.5. A, identify two more points on this line. Draw the line on the grid above. So we could have any x value, but the y is always 2.5. So let's do 3, 2.5. See, we've used one, two, three, and let's do four, two and a half. So let's draw the lines. We have three, two and a half. So over to three, up to two and a half. Right here. We have four, two and a half. And we had two, two and a half, and one, two and a half. Let's draw that line. That line is parallel to the x-axis because all of the y values are the same. Write a rule for a line that is parallel to GH. So here was GH that rule. So it's anything that's going to be parallel to the x-axis, which means that the y, va the y value is always going to be the same. So I'm just going to say y equals 
1. You could say y equals anything. As long as the y value stays the same for all of the points, it's going to be equal and parallel to line GH. Number 3. Give the rule for a line that contains point 3 fourths 1 1 half using the operation or description below. Then name two other points that would fall on each line. So here it wants us to use an addition rule to describe this line. So 3 fourths 1 1 half. So if we were going to add something, so 3 fourths the x plus what would get us 1 and 1 half? Well, 3 fourths plus 3 fourths is equal to 1 and 1 half. So my rule would be x plus 3 fourths is equal to the y value. So if I had 1 plus 3 fourths, my y value would be 1 and 3 fourths. If I had 1 and 1 half, and I added 3 fourths, I would get 2 and 1 fourth. B, a line parallel to the x-axis. So if it's parallel to the x-axis, that means that the y value always stays the same. So the y value is always going to be equal to 1 and 1 half. So we could say the x is 3, y is 1 and 1 half. Let's pick a different x value. Let's say 1 and 1 fourth. Y is going to be 1 and 1 half. It always is 1 and 1 half. Multiplication. So a multiplication rule. So if we knew 3 fourths plus 3 fourths is 1 and 1 half, so that's the same as saying 3 fourths times 2. So if we do our x value, times 2, we get y. So let's start with something simple. So if we have an x value of 1, 1 times 2 is 2, our y is 2. If we want to try a little bit trickier, if we have 1 and 1 half times 2, our y value would be 3. And a line parallel to the y-axis. So if the line's parallel to the y-axis, that means that the x value is always the same. So here the x is 3 fourths, so x is always equal to 3 fourths. So we would have an x is always 3 fourths, and then we can pick any y value, 1 and 3. E, multiplication with addition. So we have, so it wants us to do times something plus something to get our rule. So we have 3 fourths, 1 and 1 half. Now what I notice is we already did times 2 right here. And times 1 is a pretty lame rule, right? You don't, if you multiply by 1, you don't even need to have that there because if you multiply by 1, you get the same thing times 2 gets us exactly what we need, so that rule's already been used. So we're probably going to need to multiply by fraction. You can pick any fraction. Um, let's do, so if we do x, or 3 fourths, times, so pick anything here. You could pick 1 fourth, 1 half, 3 fourths. I'm going to pick 3 fourths. So we've multiplied by 3 fourths. We have x times 3 fourths, and this little dot right there, we use that in algebra when we need to write times when we don't want to write another x, because we already have an x, and x is representing something else right now. So two x's would be confusing, so we use a little dot to represent multiplication. So 3 fourths times 3 fourths, that gets us 9 sixteenths. So we have nine sixteenths, but we need to get to one and one half, right? I'm going to make that into sixteenths. We need to get to one and eight sixteenths, basically. So we already multiplied by three fourths. Now what do we need to add to nine sixteenths to get to one and eight sixteenths? Well, if we subtract those, that would be fifteen sixteenths. 
So our rule, what we did there is we multiplied by 3 fourths and then we added 15 sixteenths. So that's my rule. I know it seems a little confusing, but if you multiplied by 1 fourth, maybe you'd get something different. Maybe you multiplied by a half. Again, you'll get something different, but that rule will work. So let's pick two more points. I'm going to pick one just to keep it simple. So we have 1 times 3 fourths, that would get us 3 fourths, and 3 fourths plus 15 sixteenths. 3 fourths is equal to, let's see if we make that into sixteenths, 12 sixteenths. So we have 12 sixteenths plus 15 sixteenths. I know you're thinking, I thought I was done with fractions. So 12 plus 15 is 27 sixteenths. That will be 1 and 11 sixteenths. And one more. Let's do 2. So 2 times 3 fourths is 1 and 1 half. And 1 and 1 half, or 1 and 8 sixteenths, plus 15 sixteenths would be equal to 1 and 8 plus 15 is 23 sixteenths. If we make that into an improper fraction, or it is an improper fraction, let's make it a mixed number. 16 goes into 23 one time, so we can make it two wholes. And then 23 minus 16 we would have 7 sixteenths left over. So 2 and 7 sixteenths. Again, you can have a totally different rule that would work, which means you would have different uh, coordinate points as well. And the last one. On the grid, two lines intersect at 1, 2, 1 and 2 tenths, 1 and 2 tenths. So let's plot that. There's 1 and 2 tenths right there. And here's 1 and 2 tenths. So they would intersect right here. So two lines intersect right there. If line A passes through the origin, so let's draw line A. So it's going to pass through 0, 0, which means we can go ahead and draw that line. So that is line A, and line B contains the point 1 and 2 tenths, 0. So B is at 1 and 2 tenths, 0, right there. That's line B. Write a rule for line A and line B. So Let's start with B, because I think that will be the most simple. So B is parallel to the y-axis, which means that this x value is always 1 and 2 tenths. So B, the rule would be x is equal to 1 and 2 tenths. Let's see. And A, so we have point zero, 0, we have 1 and 2 tenths, 1 and 2 tenths. We have... Let's see, that looks like one, one tenth, one tenth, two tenths, two tenths, three tenths, three tenths. So it's looking like the rule for A would be that X is equal to Y. The X and the Y coordinates, X and the Y coordinates are always the same. 